Hi there and welcome to another video. In this video we're having a look at the Sonoff Zigbee Smart Water Valve. Uh, first of all, let's have a look how you can use a discount code and get one a little bit cheaper. Don't forget you can buy the Sonoff Zigbee Smart Water Valve directly from Sonoff online on their website itead.cc. Uh, there's a link to that in the description below and there's also a 10% off discount code in the uh, description below and on the screen at the moment so that should hopefully cover something like your postage so as you can see here there's two different thread sizes the bsp british standard and the nh so uh, have a look to see which one you need so the thread types that i just talked about are here so the thread type for uk and europe or most countries or regions is the rounded edge here which is the british standard pipe you've got a national hose version really for north america that has a sort of flat edge uh, in on the actual connector so make sure you order the correct one you do need a zigbee hub um, and if we scroll down right down to the bottom of this page uh, it shows you uh, which zigbee hubs are kind of compatible in order to get this working as probably a lot of people buy zigbee uh, items and uh, forget to buy the hub as well. So there's lots of data about the item on this web page. So this is what the hubs can actually do. So the Zigbee Bridge Pro is the one I use. So that's got ticks for everything. Uh, you will be able to use the NS Panel Pro soon and the iHost as well. And the old Zigbee Bridge standard uh, will connect, but it won't do lots of other things. And if you've got an Alexa uh, Zigbee Hub or a newer version, um, that will connect to it as well and allow you to just do on and off. So as an alternative to using a Zigbee hub, you could always use Home Assistant as well instead of a hub if you wanted to. And I'll be looking at both uh, using the hub and Home Assistant in this video. So here we have the Sonoff Zigbee Smart Water Valve. Uh, the code on this is SWVBSP. Uh, what's quite interesting on the box is you can set a timer uh, to come on at a certain time uh, you can also set a certain literage uh, to come out of the unit at a certain time as well which is really useful we just have a quick look at the back of the box we can see that the um we can see what's in it you get the smart water valve the tape and a quick guide uh, basically it's ip rated ip55 as you'd expect um, and the dimensions are 15 centimeters by 10 centimeters by four and a half centimeters. The working humidity is 5% to 95%. And this is really important. Um, the working temperature outside is five to 60 degrees. So if you've got it outside, uh, worry about that. Uh, don't leave it outside in the winter if your country gets really cold. And the watering, uh, the watering temperature is actually five to 40 degrees C. Now you need four double A batteries uh, for this unit as well, and they are not included. All right, let's open it up. So inside you get a little card showing you which way is up and down, the battery slot and the button LED light. And then there's a QR code to get the instruction manual or watch a video uh, installation tutorial. That wasn't available uh, because it's so new. Hopefully it will be by the time you watch this video. Um, then we've got another booklet as well as the PFT tape or the uh, thread tape in case you have leaks and things. So basically what you need to do is you need to hold both ends of the battery compartment cover and pull out the battery slot and then put your batteries in. Uh, step two is installing the valve. So the inlet at the top, outlet at the bottom. It's recommended to install vertically as horizontal installation may increase the error in the water flow measurements. Uh, number three, download the EWI Link app and add the Sonoff Zigbee gateway. Uh, we'll do that, but I'll hopefully also manage to get it into Home Assistant. Uh, and scan the QR code to add the device. There is a QR code on the back of the item. Uh, and then finally, um, it just talks about the effective communication distance verification as well. Um, and it says that 
you can install the device in the desired place and press the pairing button on the device uh, and then it should flash and then connect. It then says that it will work with other gateways supporting Zigbee 3.0 wireless protocol. So that'd be interesting if it works with others and not just the Sonoff one. And then it says the maximum communication distance of the device is 130 meters. That's obviously not including any walls or any uh, anything else. And there is supposed to be a manual online as well. Again, that's not there at the moment, but hopefully it will be. Um, and that's about it for the guide. Then we've really just got the unit itself. So it's quite a big unit. Sewn off written on it, so you know it's the right way up because you've got the spinny part at the top. It's got a really nice metallic uh, filter in there in the top. And on the bottom, you probably see there's some sort of filtration going on at the bottom here with a standard thread. And then the orange section is where you have your battery. So you pinch those together. And then you've got a rubber seal around the bottom here. And two go in one side and two go in the other. Then it's just a matter of slotting that back in. As I said before, the QR code is down here on the back. And then you've got what I think are some lights coming on here, which I haven't turned it on yet. So bear with me. And then you've got a clicky button on there for the on and off. And that's it for the unit. OK, so this is how my tap normally looks. So I've got a hose lock connector here. So normally I would take that off and that reveals the hose lock adapter. So I'm going to unscrew that, revealing the brass tap part. And then with the unit here, what will happen is that will then screw onto there. And then on the bottom, I'll put the actual adapter. So as if by magic, here's the adapter on the bottom of the unit. And then I've just put the hose lock, clipped it onto the bottom of there. So now I just need to put the batteries in and then screw that unit onto the top there and we should be ready to go. It's flashing green now, if you can see that. So with it finished, that's what it looks like. So as I say, the hose lock is on the bottom. Yours may be different to mine. Battery compartment is there. And then we've just got it screwed straight onto the top of the brass tap. Right, so I'm into the eWe Link app. I'm going to go to the bridge because it's a Zigbee device. And then I'm going to go add. Now it's looking for the device. So I'm just going to hold down the button on the unit. So it's found the device, SWV, if I tap into that, oh, I've got some interesting things to see. I've got the battery life on the top there. I've got the irrigation start time, the irrigation ended time. I've got the weather, which is very nice. I've got the irrigation duration and the literage and the volume. And I can schedule the time or the capacity as well. And I've got single irrigation, or I can cycle it and then also turn it on and off. And if I tap on records, we can see the graphs of the volume in literage or the duration in minutes across the hours, days, and months as well. Top right hand corner, you can rename it. We're on the latest version, 102 at the moment. 
Uh, we've got various other things such as sharing, assigning locations, units you can change to gallons or litres. And the temperature units can change as well to Fahrenheit or Celsius. And the weather settings you can change depending on your current location. Okay, so the software's in. Let's get it rigged up and see if it works. Okay, so I've turned the tap on. I've got a little bit of a leak coming from the top. That's why we've got a few drips down here. Nothing to do with the join here or here, just from me at the top here. So let's see what happens. Let's just turn it on. Okay, let's turn it off again. There we go, that seems to be working quite well. So after running it for a little while, we've got some data. So it tells me the time it started, 10, 12, 55 seconds, and the time it finished, 10, 13, and 11 seconds. It tells me I irrigated for 16 seconds, and I irrigated the volume of one liter. So if we go into the report, oh, there you go. We've got a tiny little dot on the 10, um, so yeah, the graphs are working, history's working well. So what's next then? Let's see if we can get it into Home Assistant next. So I'm in Home Assistant and the left hand side of the menu bar, I'm going to go to Zigbee to MQTT, tick on that and we can see all of our previous Zigbee items that I've added. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say permit join all now it's allowing these devices to join. So I held the button down for a number of seconds on the uh, water valve unit. And it's come up. You can see it talking on the bottom there. Hopefully it's not too new so it won't know what it is. Ah, great. We have an image. So we have got supported 102 on the firmware, battery is 78%, with my four AA batteries in it. So we've got the flow in meters cubed per hour, 78% on the battery, current device status, normal state. The valve is in normal state, water shortage or water leakage. State on or off, total number of irrigation times, durations, interviews, intervals, uh, that's that and the other, uh, the link quality on the bottom. This is the states and the entities and the attributes that we can see within Home Assistant. So we've got the battery, the battery percentage. We've got the normal state, as I said before, um, for the device. Quantitative irrigation on here as well, uh, timed irrigation, and the meters cubed per hour. And there are other cards and things like that that you could create uh, for it, such as here I've created a gauge card for show me the battery percentage. Obviously, you've got a normal on off switch here for the water valve, you could turn it on and off, and several other things like graphs for the amount of. Uh, liters you've used or anything like that. I mean, there's so many things you can do in Home Assistant with it. You could have other sensors like triggering it on and off. You could have a present sensor for animals in your garden if, garden if you wanted to scare them off and put the water on for a second or two. Um, there are more Zigbee moisture soil sensors, um, so you could work with those uh, and then uh, water the garden whenever they had a certain reading, or you could do it via time or anything like that, really. So, uh, possibilities are endless on this one. So all in all, I really do like this unit, to be honest. Um, it's The disadvantage really is it is quite large, um, but I can see why it's quite large because half of it is kind of got the batteries in it and you can't get away from that outside. So this section here is kind of battery side 
uh, and the water's just basically going through the middle and you've got to have some space for electronics I suppose in there as well but I really do like it um, to be honest uh, really useful uh, item uh, just remember not to leave it out into the cold uh, frosty uh, nights and days but I do really like the graphical interface as well I like the idea of being able to um, use a certain amount of water uh, volume and also amount of time or duration for your irrigation as well um, so I think it's really really good well thanks for watching the video I hope you enjoyed it uh, if you did give it a like and don't forget to leave a comment down below and don't forget to subscribe if you're not a subscriber thanks for watching and I'll see you soon